What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel and if you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. My name is Tony Brienne and in today's video we will be discussing everything wrong with the Mori Show. I don't know if y'all are noticing my new setup. I am now using a microphone after you guys honed in on me on getting a mic because you guys said that you guys would always hear like an echoey sound. So I invested and I got the Blue Yeti and I'm hoping it's better. So this is here for now and then my next purchase will be getting a new lens so that you guys can see like super crisp camera quality. I don't have a new lens yet because lens are so expensive so this is a great camera but the lens that I have currently is good for very up close shots versus the lens that I want is meant to be for a wider angle which is not matching up with this exact lens but we're gonna get all of that so yeah <laughs> so I'm so super excited to do this video this video is going to be I guess a fun and entertaining one but I also want to provide a trigger warning because this video can be seen as triggering as well in some of the topics that we'll be discussing yes we're gonna see some funny parts but there are triggering aspects to it so I want to respect those that can potentially be triggered but before we get into today's video I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video Lalo Lalo is a company that promotes both self pleasure and self-love and they definitely intertwine with one another. Anyone that knows me knows that I am a huge advocate for not only self-love but being able to explore our bodies and know who we are. I feel as if sexual health is seen as a taboo topic and I think that it should not be seen as such regardless of your sexual orientation, your gender, your race, or even your age. Pleasure should not be seen as shameful and Lelo agrees. Everybody's bodies is different in what they like whenever they are with a partner and one way to find out what you like is to figure that out on your own. The big O known as orgasms is something that is very important for your mental and physical health and practicing it regularly with or without a partner is something that is extremely healthy which is why I want to share with you guys a product that Lelo sent to me. So I was sent the Lelo dot and can we just talk about how pretty this is? Like you would never know that it's a toy. So the Lelo dot points exactly where you will be able to receive and reach that big O. The Lelo dot offers eight different vibration patterns and it also is very quiet. This is why I love the dot because you don't have to worry about other people hearing if you're someone that's more private. Now the dot is also something that you don't have to just share alone. You can also use this with a partner. I know Valentine's Day just passed by, but that does not mean that you have to stop spreading the love and if you want to spice up your relationship this is a fun way to not only reconnect with yourself but also your partner if you have one the dot is just one of many different toys that you can purchase on lelo's website so please be sure to check the link in my description box to find out how you can purchase lelo and thank you lelo for sponsoring this segment of today's video and without further ado guys let's get straight into today's video Taking you in this moment the show Maury that we know of as today was once called the Maury Povich Show. Now it was still hosted by Maury but it was seen more as a traditional American talk show such as the Donahue Show or even the Oprah Winfrey Show where they'd have guests come on sharing their personal problems and they would discuss it. But in 1994 there was a major shift that happened in daytime talk show history. Here she is Sarah. <laughs> And that was The Jerry Springer Show. The Jerry Springer Show is literally the origin of trashy TV. The top executives of these daytime talk shows saw how quickly The Jerry Springer Show climbed to the top in ratings and they wanted to make a big shift as well, including the executives of The Maury Povich Show. Thus, The Maury Show was born. So The Maury Povich Show was quickly transitioned to The Maury Show in 1995 to 1996. However, the original title, The Maury Povich Show, lasted until 1998 until they legally changed it. And evidently, it was the best decision they possibly could make because today, The Maury Show is one of the longest running talk shows with a single host in American history with a total of 31 seasons for over two decades. Though the show is seen as widely entertaining to most, when you look at the bigger picture, there are a lot more problematic attributes of the show than good attributes. And in this video, we'll be breaking down just a few of the problematic aspects of the Maury show as we know today. 
So Mori is widely known for doing DNA tests for children. And this can be seen as incredibly helpful because some people do not have the resources to afford having a DNA test. But Mori started doing some spinoff segments that can be seen as not only damaging, but humiliating to many different people. And we're about to talk about a few of those segments, starting off with number one, the exploitation of children on this show. Mori would constantly have children on the show that were cursing, behaving in an obscene and wild manner, disrespecting their parents, and just not acting as we would expect a kid to act. Now, though we saw it as funny, this can be seen traumatic for a lot of children. And we're about to watch together exactly what I'm speaking about. My name is Jesse and I'm seven years old. I smoke cigarettes and raw weed. My favorite drink is whiskey. If you and Mikey, you can shut the f up. When my mom says I have to go to school, I punch her, I kick her, and slap her. When my mom gets in my face, I say, shut the f up, you stupid bitch. When my mom cries, I laugh at her face. I'm seven and no one can tell me what the f to do. Okay, so we have to pause that really quickly. So in terms of that clip of that little boy, like he says he likes whiskey. As we all know, the legal drinking age is 21. So it's illegal for teens, let alone children. And the fact that we're broadcasting this on television and parents aren't going to jail or getting arrested for the fact that they're allowing their seven year old to be drinking whiskey is insane to me. And the fact that we're using this as entertainment and people are booing and laughing while he's telling them to shut the F up at seven is obscene to me. Let's look at this next clip. This clip is so shocking to me. I take her to church every Sunday. My name is Candace and I am nine years old. I call my mother a stupid ass bitch and a dumb <laughs> When my mom tells me what to wear, I tell her to shut her <laughs> mouth. I just said to everywhere, at the playground and at school. When I grow up, I would be a stripper and make a lot of money. Look how upset your mother is. So with this clip right here, they are exploiting this child, not just exploiting her, but sexually exploiting her. She's putting on makeup, she's dressing in raunchy clothes. Like you cannot tell me this is not exploiting children for views and money. It's disturbing to watch in its own. I'm seven years old. I like to show off my sexy stomach and my sexy bra. Right now I'm dating three boys. When my mom doesn't let me wear my sexy clothes, I slap her around. I may be seven, but I have a body as a 17 year old woman. Shut up, I don't care what you guys say. These are my clothes. I can wear whatever I want. I'm eight years old. I wear short shorts and bras, and the boys love it all. I love to make out with boys, and pretty soon I'll be in the sex stuff. My favorite drink is passion fruit, wine coolers, and very yummy. When my mom gives me P.O., I call her stupid biatch. I took a knife and I cut my mom's truck and now she knows not to get me P.O. I go where I want to go and I do what I want to do. My mom better stop bitching and understand it. Come on out here, Jess. <laughs> Disgusting thing I've ever seen. Yeah. How many? Well, oh, how many boyfriends you have? I've had tons. Tons? And once again, as you guys could see with all those other little girls, they are sexually exploiting them. You cannot convince me a seven year old says, oh, I'm seven, but I dress like a 17 year old. Like that does not sound natural coming out of a seven year old's mouth. Just how they're dressing, the cursing, it's very volatile. It seems as if the kids are set up to say what they're saying and it's disturbing to watch if they really were set up to say these things. So now we're going to move on to a little bit of a older age group. And this has to do with teens. I felt as if Donald Trump, oh my God, y'all. <laughs> why I said Donald Trump. I feel as if Maury used teens and their sexuality for sure to get views and to exploit them and embarrass them. There were teen girls coming on the show as young as 14 being publicly humiliated. The girls are being aired for being sexually active, contracting 
having miscarriages. It's so disturbing to watch once again. And we're gonna look at these videos together as well. These girls are 14 and 15 years old. Their mothers brought them here because they've heard rumors. Did she have sex with the 32 year old man? <laughs> they've dealt with teen pregnancies. At 14, Akia confessed that she might be pregnant. <gasps> and they've dealt with the unimaginable. I once took 14 double shots of vodka. The police got called on me, and I told them I'd have sex with him if he didn't tell my mom. We're going to expose these young teen secret sex lives with the... Like, why? And the lie detector test. You were asked if you've ever had sex with a 32-year-old man. What's the matter with you? He had money! How much money did he have? Enough for me! Really? Yeah. At 14, Alex already had an STD and two miscarriages. Don't live your life. You see, at 14, Alex, she's been picked up and hospitalized for public intoxication. Wow. She's already had a sexually transmitted. Wow. And she claims to have had not one, but two miscarriages. Wow. 14. Check her out. I get in trouble all the time for every little thing I do. My mother is so annoying and everything she does makes me want to slap her. My mom thinks I've had sex with four people and that's all she needs to know. I once took 14 double shots of vodka and got wasted. The police got called on me and I told them I'd have sex with him if he didn't tell my mom, but that didn't work. I love older guys because they know how to treat a girl right. They have cars, money, and they buy me things. What more could I want? My name is Akia and I'm 15 years old. I do what I want and I don't care what anyone has to say about it. I told my mom I only had sex with one person and I don't care if she believes me or not. Last year I thought I was pregnant I was happy because I wanted to have a baby. Now I want to have a baby when I'm 17 because I do not want to be an old mom. My mom says she heard me talking on the phone with the boy talking about how we had sex in the public park. That never happened. My mom's a liar, not me. I got so drunk once I mixed vodka and tequila and puked outside my mom's job. She got so mad at me, but I thought it was real funny. Mom, half the stuff you think I'm doing, you're wrong about. The other half, you just let me worry about that. So do me a favor and stay out of my business and leave me alone. Here's Akia. Akia, come on out. Once again, we are publicly humiliating and exploiting these young girls who are openly suggesting that they have performed an act of <laughs> with older men. And then you also have these girls that say they want to be teen moms. That is not normal. And though I'm not a psychologist, many of the times it's because they have been <laughs> as a child or they're lacking love at home. Regardless of what the circumstances are, these girls don't need to be on live television embarrassing and exploiting themselves. They need to seek help with a professional, a psychologist or therapist at that. And for the parents, putting your young child on a show like Maury is not going to help your child to become a better person. Honestly, that just means you need to be a better parent if your child is gonna go on a show like that. So right along with the one girl that said that she was sleeping with a 32 year old man or that she has slept with a 32 year old man for money, there was another girl, a 13 year old, who said that she had sex with a 22 year old. That is But no, we're just parading the fact that she's a bad kid and not a victim. Let's take a look at this clip. My name is Natasha and I'm 13 years old. I do what I want, when I want, and how I want to do it. Can't nobody tell me what to do. I have sex with 10 people and I don't care what nobody says about it. The first time I ever gave oral sex, I was 11 years old and it was in the back of a school bus. I like older men because they're more experienced, got cars, and they buy me things. 13. I ever been with was 22 years old. Age ain't nothing but a number to me. I love to get high and I drink hard liquor. I drink it straight up. I smoke weed whenever I want. I don't give a damn what my mama thinks about it. Rules are meant to be broken and that's exactly what I do. I live my life how I want to live it and ain't a damn person gonna tell me wrong. I hope I made my point. Once again, outrageous. This little girl is exposing the fact that her mother is a horrible parent and the fact that she is a victim. Like, I don't understand 
how we're just ignoring that component. Moving right along to number two, domestic violence being exploited on The Maury Show. Maury had a segment on his show where he had a bunch of domestic violence abusers and their victims coming on the series and showing how they are so tough and rough with these victims. Now, Maury made it seem like he was trying to help these women, but honestly, it just seemed as if he was exploiting them and trying to use them as profit. We're gonna watch this together, and I promise you guys will be shocked and appalled by what we're about to see. Four years of endless control. My house is my domain. Gina's my property, and I'm her big daddy. Gina must trim my toenails, trim my eyebrows, and give me sex on demand. Four years of name calling. She's a disgusting hooker and sees nothing without <laughs> me. And four years of physical abuse. I grab her by the hair, I drag her down the hall, and I choke her. The control and abuse started the moment Regina met her boyfriend, Bob. As soon as I met Bob, I thought it was going to be the best thing that ever happened to me until the control started. He makes me call him Big Daddy, and he calls me a whore and a hooker in front of all of my friends, and it just breaks my heart. I don't know how much longer I can take it. Gina can cry all she wants, but she knows all women are terrorists. Gina terrorizes me every day because she thinks she's equal to me. No woman will ever be equal to a man, ever. <laughs> So we have this woman on here that's crying and sobbing at the fact that she's been physically and mentally abused for years. But she's on this show and we're acting as if this is just entertainment. Like, please watch this part. This part shocked me. All women are hookers. To him. And the only ones, the only ones that are not hookers are ones that are not old enough to be hookers yet. And he calls all my friends hookers. And every woman is property. Every woman. Can you do this to, to can you do this to Bob, aka Big Daddy? Can you say to him, dear, I'm going in to take a shower? Oh, I can go take a shower, but he's gotta watch. Or he comes in there and jerks the door open while I'm peeing. Why? He thinks I'm standing at the window with all my clothes off showing people my body at the window. And I wouldn't do that. I love him. I love him. So we have this woman crying at the fact that she can't even take a shower in peace because her husband, well, boyfriend, believes that she is showing her body to other men while she's showering. This is an abusive, controlling tactic. And we're all just gasping and we're not really reacting the way that I believe that anyone should react. This is not something that should be displayed on live television. This is someone that needs to get away from this man as soon as possible because it's seeming as if he can physically harm her to the point where she's no longer here with us. We're gonna get to this next part that really scares and shocks me. And the fact that we saw this on live television is one of the most disgusting reasons why I have to show y'all this clip. Take a look at this. Michael. That's who we're gonna deal with now. He says all women are dogs. Dogs. Charity is his dog. He brags about making Charity sit on the floor because he didn't approve of her makeup. He sits there and is proud that he locks her in the bedroom when she came home late. And when she doesn't cook his food the way he likes he chokes her. Like maybe that's happened 20 times. Watch. All women should be barefoot, pregnant, in the kitchen, cooking, and giving us sex anytime we want, period. All women are damn dogs. They need to be trained like dogs. If I tell Cherry to sit her ass on the floor like a damn dog, you best believe she's gonna sit her ass on the floor like a dog, or else these hands will be around her damn neck. If I feel Cherry disrespects me, I call a fat, nasty bitch, just like the rest of the women in the world are. I don't care that Cherry was upset on Mother's Day because her mother's passed. Bottom line, she came home late, so I threw her clothes over the balcony. When I found out Charity left my house without permission, I locked the ass in the bedroom for eight hours. I was taught that a man's supposed to control a woman, so any woman that feels like they should step up to me needs her ass beat. Tough guy. So he admitted to kidnapping, physically abusing, emotionally abusing, and being controlling. And this is all displayed on a TV show as entertainment once again. And y'all gonna keep hearing me say entertainment over and over again because that's what the most shocking aspect of this is. Now watch what he makes her do 
on live television. Heart wrenching. My you make her sit on the floor like a dog. Yeah, we want, we want to see her sit on the floor like a dog. Sit your ass on the floor. Sit your ass on the floor like a dog. No, I'm your man. That ain't your man. You don't listen to him. Sit your ass on that floor like a dog. Sit your ass down. No, sit your ass down. Sit your ass down. Sit down. Sit down. just proved she does whatever the hell I tell her to do so that was it you humiliated her, her in front of millions of she people she does what I tell her to do you just humiliated her in front she of does millions what I tell of her to people do. okay in the morning no she won't be okay yes, she will. well I'll tell you one thing I'll tell you one thing we're gonna make it okay for her because <laughs> you're not gonna continue this way so you see Morty trying to seem as if he's helping, saying, oh, you humiliated her in front of millions of people. But Morty, you're giving him the platform to humiliate her in front of millions of people. That was one of the most disgusting clips I've seen. I don't know if it's fake or not, but if it is real, and even if it was fake, it's giving abusers at home the okay to continue abusing their significant other and treating them like they're less than or a dog in Michael's words. For me, I'm just trying to understand what is the goal in segments like this. So I'm not gonna show the rest of the video. If you guys wanna see it, you guys can just search it on YouTube. I might just actually add a link down below. But he had the abusers, the men, see their women in caskets and he had them speak to people and see how their lives would be if their women were no longer in their lives. Now that doesn't seem like the best form of therapy. You're not going to learn how to treat a woman right then and there just by seeing her in a casket. It doesn't change anything and I highly doubt anything was changed. All of these women need proper help and all of these men need jail time. Being on a TV show is not going to amend any of these very serious problems. So now let's move on to a lighter note. Though it is still serious, it can be seen as funny and I've seen clips on TikTok, Instagram, Instagram reels, etc., of Mori exploiting people for views due to their phobias. Now, some of these phobias are extreme and might seem ridiculous to us, but it's very real to these people. And Mori calls them on their show and throws the phobias in their faces. Take a look at these few clips. Emily is deathly afraid of what a lot of us do not like mice. This is her husband, Jerry. You know why Jerry is out here? Because Emily has been known, Emily has been known to destroy people next to her if she sees a mouse. Why do you hate mice so? Ah! <laughs> All right, that's enough. That's enough. Take her out. Take her out. Take it out. Take it out. Take it out. Take it out. There's a woman named Tara, and Tara's fanning herself because she's having trouble catching her breath because she knows that within a few minutes she has to come face to face with her worst fear, frogs. I do not like frogs, period. My fear is when frogs pee on me, I will turn into a witch with warts on my hands, the nose grows long, the face just gets terrible. Don't show me a picture of the of the frog. And over there, way over there. Ah! Whoa, 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 Don't pull me, Tora, don't pull me. Tora, don't pull me. No, no, Tora, don't pull me. No, 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 you can't go over there. You can't go over there. Frogs are scary. Okay, now, <laughs> bring it out over, way over there. Don't come over here. Ah! <laughs> Don't do this. All right, that's enough. That's enough. Okay, that's enough. Don't bring him here. He is deathly afraid of cotton balls. 
I can't see them, I can't touch them, I can't hear them, and I don't like it. And I don't, I don't want to be around it. And I don't want. Oh my! <laughs> Not funny. I'm sorry. Where'd you go? <laughs> wait, wait a second, Peggy. 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 There are no olives here. There are no olives here. Tell my son, bring out the olives. I don't even mean to laugh because these are like people's real phobias, but bring out the olives after she just told you this story. Like, oh my God, Maury is out of pocket and he deserves jail time. <laughs> like, I don't understand. Now this could be seen as funny. As y'all see, I did chuckle a bit, but he's really exploiting these people while they're having visceral reactions. Like they're really terrified of this stuff. Now y'all might think, okay, this is exposure therapy. If you don't know what exposure therapy is, exposure therapy is when a psychiatrist might bring something that you're scared of. Say you're scared of spiders. He will slowly bring spiders to you so that you can reach that realization that Hey, spiders aren't that scary. So maybe it'll start off with like a drawing of a spider. Then it'll be like a picture of a spider, then a video of a spider, and then he'll show you a real spider. But this is not exposure therapy. Like I said, exposure therapy is when a therapist is gradually exposing their client to that exact phobia. Maury's just cutting it cold turkey and throwing their phobias at them. Exposing someone who has an extreme phobia to something right away is not going to cure it. It actually makes it worse. And and what Maury is doing is further traumatizing these people and it is not okay. Once again, it could be seen as entertaining and funny to us, but to them, these are real fears and real issues. So the question to finish this all off is, is Maury fake? Maybe all these situations that I'm saying aren't really that big of a deal because it's fake. A few people have come out exposing whether Maury is fake or not, at least on Reddit they have. So a user on Reddit came out and said that they were a former guest on The Maury Show and people started asking questions on what their experience was like on the show, whether it was fake, how much they were paid and how things went. So this particular person said that they went on for a DNA test and when someone asked if they were paid, they said that they were paid $500 and they also received a babysitter. Along with their $500 payment, the DNA test was free, their flight was free, their hotel room was free, and anything that they ate was free while they were on their journey at the Maury show. This person also said that the show was heavily edited, though they weren't necessarily given a script, they cut out a lot of components that would add to the story or make the story seem not as entertaining for viewers. This person also said that when they were on the show, them and their guests, which was their husband, were incredibly sleep deprived to the point where they had a million Red Bulls. Well, the Maury executives and producers gave them a bunch of Red Bulls, which made them very erratic and high strung, so they would act out of the norm. Now, we don't know if these are true. These are all allegations because we don't know if this person really was on the show, but this is their experience. They claim they were on the series. And it seems pretty fair. This is how a lot of people discuss these TV shows. They say a lot of the similar things that she said. The show is heavily edited. They're paid to be there. And it's not all that we may think it's cracked up to be. Someone who claims to be a former producer on The Maury Show came out also on Reddit, confirming some aspects of the show to be real or not. When someone asked if the show was scripted, they said that it definitely wasn't scripted. This was the producer I'm speaking about, but they said that there was some nudging involved. And when they say nudging, they mean that like, you know, they kind of were persuaded to talk about certain aspects that were seen as juicier or more entertaining for TV. So to answer whether the Maury show is real or not, it seems to be real, but heavily orchestrated to perceive well to a live studio audience and also viewers at home. 
But that is the end of today's video and all of the negative attributes of The Maury Show. The Maury Show can be seen as entertaining, but we also have to remember that these people on the show are real people and they have real stories. And how they're perceived on the show may not always be true. So I, of course, want to know what you guys think in the comments down below. What are your thoughts on The Maury Show? Do you think The Maury Show is toxic? Do you think it's entertaining? Do you think the guests should just get over it because this is what they signed up to be on? Let's get the discussion going in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. We are on the road to 100,000 subscribers, so please continue subscribing to my channel and sharing it. Thank you all so much for the love and support, and I will see you all in my very next video. Love you guys. Bye. Mwah. Taking you in this moment, come get close like you own name. Read your aura, you want more of all this love, you'll be your name. Release all of your burdens.